In this video you will learn how to create dynamic nested forms inside Angular. You probably know how to create a form inside Angular by using reactive forms. It is extremely easy to do when your form is simple. But what can we do if we have some dynamic values that we want to insert in form? Let's say that we want to create a quiz, so we have a quiz form where we can add our questions and every single question can have lots of answers. How can we implement such form? As you can see here, I created a new folder, quiz form, which is almost empty. Inside component.html I have just an empty form. Inside CSS I have some styling for our form, so it is looking better. And inside TypeScript file it is an empty quiz form component. So we are starting coding here by injecting reactive forms module to our component. Now we want to inject inside form builder, which will help us to build a form. This is by fb inject, and we want to inject here non nullable form builder. And actually, most people are using just plain form builder, which is fine, but all values of it can be null. We can tell it to make properties non nullable, but here is a better solution. We can use this non nullable form builder, and all fields won't be nullable. And after this, let's create our quiz form. And here we want to call fb.group because our form is just an object with some fields. And here we want to create questions and our questions will be an array. This is why this fb array, which will create for us questions. And inside we must provide an empty array because we won't have any data. But here is a problem. We are hovering on quiz form and here we are getting form group with questions, but form array is form control unknown. Let's first of all talk about naming. We have here form group, this is just an object with some form controls. And form control is just a control of a single field. Like for example you have an input name, it is not just a string, it's a form control of type string. Here we have form array, because this is an array of questions, of form control unknown, which is actually bad. And this is completely valid because TypeScript doesn't really know what data we will throw inside. This is why I want to write some typings so our form is correctly typed. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just wanted to let you know that only 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. If you really want to continue getting videos and support my channel, consider subscribing. It helps a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. First of all, here we want to create a type form, which is a form group, you already saw that, and inside we can provide that this is an object with questions inside. And now our questions is form array, and I want to throw inside form question, which essentially means inside our questions we want to have an array of form question. What is form question? Let's create it now here. Form question is just a single question, this is why it also will be form group, because inside we want to store at least the title of this question and also an array of answers. This is why it will be a form group also, and inside it we will create two fields. First of all, let's create a question name, which will be a form control of type string, this is exactly what I said, we will bind this to the string input, and after this we want our answers, and again our answers is an array, this is why form array of form answer. And again we don't have form answer, but it is nice to have a correct data type for every single thing. This is why here let's create a type, which is form answer, and it is also a form group. And now inside we will create just a single property text, which will be form control of type string. And here you might say, okay, why did we create form answer as a form group with text if we have just a single field? We could say that this is a string. Yes, we can, but if we are writing it as a form group, we can easily add more fields later if we need to. So this is the idea. We have our form, which is a form group. Inside we have an array of questions, which is our form question. And every single form question is a form group with these fields, question name and answers. Question name is just a form control for the string, like an input, and answers again is a form array, just like here, but inside we have a form group of text with form control string. And it is extremely important to write your data types before you even start working, because in this case you are sure that you are implementing correct things. 
This is why here we can say that our quiz form is a form and now it is typed not correctly. Why is that? As you can see here, we're getting an error. The type of property controls are incompatible. And here we're getting questions, which is form array of form control unknown, because we didn't specify here what we're getting in the array, but we want to get here form array form question, which essentially means to fix it here, we must provide that we're getting form question inside. And now it is all good and our form is fully covered with data type. But this is not all. It makes a lot of sense by default to throw inside our form at least a single question. So inside browser, we see the empty field with a question where we can type something and we can directly add our answers. But in order to implement it, I want to create an additional function. Let's name it generate question. And what it must do, it must create for us a form question. This is why we created all these types. They are simplifying our life. So what is from question? This is a form group with question name and answers. This is what we need to return here. It will be this FB group and inside an object we first of all create a question name, it's just an empty string and we're creating our answers and it is this FB array of type form answer and here inside we're providing an empty array. What does it mean? This generate question function creates for us a form group and inside form group we're storing first of all question name which is a string and dances which is an empty array of form answer and this is our form group with text inside as we have here an empty array it does not scream at us and now what we can do here we can throw inside our questions this dot generate question and just call it which actually means by default inside we will have a question. Now let's try to render some markup. So first of all on our form we want to bind a form group and our form group that we created is our quiz form. We also must bind here ng submit and we didn't create yet on submit function. So let's add it now inside our component. And what I want to do inside this function is simply console log our raw values of the form. So this quiz form get raw value. Now let's jump back inside our HTML and in our form, let's first of all render h1 tag that this is the quiz form. And after this, we want to render a list of our questions. And as you remember, this is the only field inside our form. But the main point is in order to render an array, we need a container with this specific key. This is why here we must write that we have a div with form array name and inside we must provide questions. This is how we're doing that if we need to render an array. As we have an array of questions, we must create a parent form array name with these questions. In other case, it won't work. And now inside we can use a for to render a list of questions. So here is question of questions and we're getting our questions from quiz form dot controls. So this is not questions directly dot questions dot controls. And you might think why it looks so strange because essentially quiz form has lots of properties inside. And here we're interested only in controls. And as you can see, when we're writing here controls, we're getting access to an object where inside we have our questions. This is why controls questions is exactly what we want. Questions is our form array of form questions. And again, it has lots of properties. In order to access it as a list, we must read here controls. As you can see here, we're getting form question array. This is exactly what we want to loop through. But here I don't like this dollar index because index is too generic. I want to create here question index and let's assign here dollar index. Now inside our track, we can change index to our question index and we need to remove dollar. So our for loop is ready. Now inside we want to render every single question. This is why here div class question. But this is not enough because we want to render specific key of the form. In order to do that, we must say in which group we are. This is why here we must write form group name and it must equal question index. What does this code means? Here we're inside the loop and inside this specific div we want to render some inputs and bind some keys which are referencing this specific form group. In order to do that we are setting form group name and as you can see here it tracks the name of the form group bound to the directive. 
and now it allows us inside to render an input which is related to this specific question. So here will be input with type text and here at last we are writing form control name like we are doing in plain reactive forms. And here our name will be question name. And additionally I want to write here a placeholder, for example question name. So once again here inside our TypeScript file we have a question name as a key. But if you don't write here form group name it won't work. It won't know from which object it must take this question name. This is why this form group name is extremely important. This form array name is also extremely important. As you can see in browser our quiz form is looking much better. We rendered here our first question and inside we have a question name. And before we start with our answers here on the bottom I want to create a button to submit our form. So let's create here a div with a button, with type submit and let's write inside submit. Now here we can type something in the question and hit submit and this is how our response look like. So we have an object with questions which is an array, inside we have a single object which is our question with the name that I provided inside question name and an empty array of answers. The next thing that I want to do is implement functionality to add new questions. This is why here let's create one more div with class add question and inside let's create a button with click event and here we need a function something like add question and the type here will be button and inside our button let's write text add question. So our button is there now let's implement this add question. And what it must do, it must simply generate new question, nothing more. This is why it returns void. And here I want to access our quiz form dot controls, just like we did inside our markup dot questions. And as this is an array, we can use here push. And inside I want to push this generate question, which essentially means we're adding this empty question at the end of our array. Let's check this out. Here is our question. We can click add question and voila, our additional question is there. We can hit submit and as you can see now we are getting four questions which are obviously empty. Now let's implement removing of our questions. This is why after our input I want to create a span with a click event and we need here a function remove question. And inside we want to provide question index because we will remove by the index. Additionally we need a class remove and I want to put inside a cross. Now let's implement this function inside our TypeScript file. So we know that inside we are getting our question index which is a number and what we need is from this array we need to remove an item. So it will be this quiz form controls questions and we have a function remove add where inside we are providing an index. In our case it's a question index. Let's check this out. Here I am reloading the page. We can see our question. We can click cross and our question is removed. I can add several questions, hit on the question and it will be removed. Now we need to render a list of answers inside our question. This is why here after our span I want to create a div with form array name. Why form array name again? Because we are rendering a list of answers inside our question. And here we must say that we are rendering our answers and we need here a class answers. And inside this div let's create one more div answers so we know what we are talking about and here will be our for loop. So again we are writing for loop to get access to every single question and here we want to read our quiz form again dot controls dot questions dot controls and here we want to read a specific question by question index. This is why here we can write add and we are providing our question index inside. So this will give us the question but the main problem is that for TypeScript add can obviously lead to undefined if we don't find an element by index. This is why here we must put a question mark and we want to read here controls which is the controls of our question then again question mark dot answers to read all our answers and here we want to read controls of the answers. Again if you want you could move this code on the top like with form controls question controls or this code here to an additional function to make it more readable. But to keep it simple I will leave it here. And as you can see now inside controls we are getting an array of form answer. 
Now again, we have here track dollar index, which I want to rename. Let's name it answer index. And in order to implement it, we must create here our answer index and assign inside dollar index. So our for loop is ready. Now inside we want to render every single answer. This is why here let's create a div. And again, we need here a form group. So form group name. And here we're providing our answer index, which is a unique ID and also a class answer just for styling. Now inside our div, we want at least to render an input for our answer. This is why here input type text. Also, let's create a placeholder answer and here form control name, which will be text. Let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page here. We're getting answers, but we don't see any answers at all because an array is empty and we didn't create a button to add an answer. So after our for loop, I want to add a button and let's write here add answer and the type here must be button. Let's also add a class, which will be add answer. And we need here our click event which will be add answer and we must provide here a question index so we know to which question we are adding our answer. Now let's jump to our TypeScript file and create a function add answer. So here we are getting our question index which is a number and this function returns void. And by the way here inside remove question we must also say that our function returns void. So what we want to do inside our add answer, we want to prepare a new answer. This is why here let's write new answer, which will be of type form answer. And here we're calling our this fb group. In order to create our answer with text, which will be an empty string. And after this, we must just push this answer inside our array in our question. So here again, we can use this construction to access the array of our questions. And here we're using add question index to get access to this specific question dot controls dot answers dot push. And here we're pushing inside our new answer that we just created. And again, add can fail. This is why here I would put a question mark after add and after controls and also after answers. Let's check if it's working now. So we see here our add answer button, I can click on it. And as you can see, we're generating new answers inside of a specific question. Now here I can add one more question and create other answers inside it, which actually means we successfully rendered a list of answers and implemented add functionality. And the last thing that we are missing is removing of our answer. This is why here after our input, I want to implement removing of the answer. So I want to copy paste this span that we wrote to remove a question, put it here inside. Let's rename it to remove answer. And in order to remove an answer, we want to know our question index, but also our answer index. And now let's implement remove answer functionality. So we know that we are getting here our question index, which is a number, and also our answer index, which is also a number. And this function return for us void. Now here, essentially, we want to copy paste this line completely because we're doing exactly the same. We're trying to find the question by question index. We're getting access to the array of our answers. And after this, we want to use remove add to remove an item with answer index that we provided inside. So we're doing exactly the same how we did it with our questions. Let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page. I am adding several answers and I'm hitting here remove and we successfully removed our answer. Now let's check if we can submit the whole form. So here is question one and answer one and answer two. And here is our question two with answer one. Let's hit here submit and check what we got back. So here is our object with questions. Question names are saved there. And inside every single object, we have our answers. And as you can see, all text is saved successfully. And also, if you are interested, what new stuff we're getting inside Angular 17 regarding outputs, I highly recommend you to check this video to learn that.